So now we're moving on to number two. So number two says the compound X contains 49.48% of carbon, 5.191% um, hydrogen, 28.87% nitrogen, and 16.48% oxygen by mass. They also tell you that X's molecular weight lies between uh, 188 and 200 grams per mole. So they want to determine the molecular formula of the compound. So remember, if you're ever going to try to find the molecular formula, you want to go to the empirical formula first, right? So how do we do that? Well, first off, we know that all these percentages have to add up to 100. So the first assumption we're going to make here is we're going to assume we have 100 grams of compound. Because if I do that, then 49.48% of carbon in 100 grams is just 49.48 grams. So we can say we have 49.48 grams of carbon. We can say we have 5.191 grams of hydrogen. 28.87 grams of nitrogen. 16.48 grams of oxygen. So all these will add up to 100 because I assumed 100 grams. So we'll say up here, assume 100 grams. Okay. So I can't compare any of these molecules in grams. So the first thing I need to do is convert all these to moles. So we want to convert all these to moles using their molar mass. Because remember, we can't compare in grams. We can only compare in moles. So I know there's 12.01 grams and one mole of carbon. One mole of hydrogen has 1.008 grams. One mole of nitrogen has 14.01 grams. And one mole of oxygen has 16 grams. So if you go ahead and calculate these all out, you should get here around 4.16 moles. Here you'll get 5.15 moles. Um, nitrogen, you should get 2.06 moles. And oxygen, you'll get about 1.03 moles. So as it stands right now, you can say you have about carbon, 4.16, uh, hydrogen, 5.15, nitrogen, 2.12, and oxygen, 1.03. That's technically what you have. You have this many moles of each of them. But this just looks weird. We've never seen it like this, right? Because what you want to do is you want to divide by the smallest amount of moles. So I, so I see my smallest amount of moles here is going to be my oxygen. So if I divide everybody by 1.03, you should get much more manageable numbers. So on top here, I'll get 4. Uh, for hydrogen, I'll get 5. For nitrogen, I'll get two, and for oxygen, I'll get one. Now that looks a little better. So now we're looking at C4, H5, N2O1. That is the smallest value I can give each of these numbers. So we would call this the empirical formula. But that's not what the answer is looking for, the question is looking for. The question is looking for the molecular formula. So how do we find the molecular formula? Well, they tell us that the molecular formula that we're looking for lies between 188 grams per mole and 200 grams per mole. So you're, now you're probably thinking, okay, how, well, how would I know, how would I get that number? Well, I know that this right here, if I added up all of this, I would see that it weighs 97.1 grams per mole. If you just use your periodic table and you add up all the grams per moles, you'll see that it adds up to 97.1. Well, I can only change this by a factor. So I can multiply it times 2, multiply it times 3, right? So I can uh, make this 8, make this 10, make this 4, make this 2, or multiply them all times 3 and just increase by a factor. But they're telling us it lies between 188 and 200. Well, if I multiply this number times 2, I'll get 194.2, which lies between that value. So that's the number we're looking for. So really, our answer should have been everybody multiplied times 2. So we're really looking at C8, H10, N4, O2. Uh, and that should be, yep, answer choice number 2. The Teaching Center. UF's Learning Resource Center.